In this video, we are going to do an aimbot system where you can aim and lock onto targets and then just kill them. This works on NPCs, test players, and regular players. So if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, hype, subscribe, and share. And if you want to access this code file directly, you can check our Patreon in the description. So let's continue with the video. Hey everyone. In this video, we are going to have a have an aimbot device that basically, when you like aim on a target, it will make the um, crosshair stick to that target. So how do you use this? So we have two triggers. So if, when a player triggers the enable trigger, the enable aimbot trigger, the aimbot uh, mech mechanic will be enabled for that player and when they trigger the disable aimbot trigger it will be disabled for them um and if you want to disable the aimbot mechanic for a player after they die you can check in this box um, so this works for test players usual players and also guard spawners um you know i initial i just I'm just actually using the guard spawners for testing, but maybe you have a PvE game, then you can actually, not just for testing, but you know, just regularly use it. So you can fill in the guard spawners in this array. And then we have an aim input trigger, which is a, make sure that it doesn't consume the input. And you don't actually need to show it on the hood, but I do for the purposes of this video. Um, but yeah, you don't need to show, I, I, I'd i say you don't need to show it on the hood, but maybe because aimbot only works when you're aiming, maybe you could say, you know, aim for um, like aimbot. Um, and then, yeah, but here's the thing, this is ad registered. Um, so it will be enabled at default because this is just a, you know, the device just listens to the held event of this device. But if you maybe if you want to use the hood of this for your aimbot, maybe then I'd say um, make it a require registered and then register it on this enable trigger and then unregister it at the disable trigger. I think that that will be better. And then we have a couple of um, parameters here for you to actually control um the behavior of this aimbot so because you know you can um, play test it and actually adjust the value so that it just fits right in um, to your liking um, because depending on the values it might feel too jittery or you know too you know non-snappy so we have um so six parameters here and for a couple of them, we have a, I'm sorry, we have five of them. And for three of them, we have a helper message if you hover on, on them. So first we have the aimbot max distance. So this says, uh, so this is the default value is two, uh, 2048. So it says, because of the limitations of UFN, which, you know, I, I've written this, uh, I wrote this, um, because of the limitations of UFN, aimbot doesn't work properly at long distances. Um, so yeah, that's the situation because what we're doing is, and you'll see that in a second in the in the code too, we are um, using the camera rotation when we are um, actually trying to detect the target, but when it comes to, you know, changing the rotation of the player we need to we can't actually change the rotation of the v, v rotation we need to change the rotation of the fourth character itself which they're actually different things and this works good uh, when the target is close enough because uh, they are you know the rotations are similar but when the target is far away then you know rotations become um, like much different and it, it doesn't work at all or it works you know in a wrong way so what we done is instead just have a max distance and if the um, target is 
uh, like a, at a greater distance than this max distance, aimbot just will not run, will not work. Um, and then we have the cone degree. So basically, we are this is for detecting. So what we are doing is we are um, like a, like calculating a cone from the view location and view rotation of the um, player, and then you know going for that max max distance basically, and you know trying to find the uh, target that is the closest in like angular wise the closest one and then the so and this one so if you want the aim bot to affect a larger area you need to increase this value but also this value must be greater than the aim bot uh, rotation degree threshold which is this value which I see now that I don't have a D there so at the that's actually wrong. So let me open up my code file here in VS Code. So this is actually, we need a D here. Okay. Um, so yeah, this needs to be greater than this one. And this is actually the threshold. So when, you know, after finding um, the degree uh, finding the uh, like the target we only up update update the um, um, the rotation if um, the threshold the the degree is greater than this one so this must be some a small value and must be you know also must be smaller than this degree value here so I actually, I guess 2.5 is something I have. Um, so actually, let me make these because these were the default values. Um, so I'm going to use, so these are the, you know, values that are, I think, that are good enough. And I can actually go ahead and make the, I think I can make the threshold like one. Right. Okay. Okay. Actually, doing a live change to this right now. I think because I want the default values in the code uh, to be values that I'm actually using for testing. So that's important. Um. And yeah, height offset is just you know because it's going to lock on to the like the location of the fourth character, and it's actually like somewhere around around like the hip region and if you maybe like you want it to uh, like targets closer to the head or maybe someplace else like your chest then you would need to add a height offset here and the cooldown so this is the like the update uh, minimum update this is basically the update period of the rotation so if um, this is zero it basically updates at each uh, frame Right. Um, and then, yeah, and then we come to the code. You've seen all these. This is where we keep the per agent data, which is just is aimbot active and also the last aim correction time. And then we have the test NPCs filled in this array. Um, and the, in the on begin, we listen to the trigger events of the triggers we listen to the events of the guard spawner which is a spawn event and eliminate event then we spawn the async function for the aimbot and i'll skip that and i'll show these first so when trigger enable is called we first actually initialize the player data if there is no player data right and then we um listen to the eliminated event of the player because you know we're going to if because if disable aimbot after death is enabled, we're going to deactivate the aimbot. And then, you know, we activate the aimbot here and on the disable trigger, we just deactivate it. And so when the, when a guard is spawned, we are adding that to the test NPCs array. And when they're, when they're dead, they're dead, we are removing them from the test NPCs array. Um, so this is a helper function for the, for the async loop. Uh, which I am I still using that? Um, yeah, I'm actually that's the 
So actually that's the one of the main ones here. So yeah, let me show you what's going on here. So first we are looping for all the players and we are looking, okay, is this player um, have the aimbot activated and is this player also alive? And is this player uh, like uh, holding the aim trigger? And also, so by the way, let me push my changes while that's going on, while I'm talking about this. Um, and if the like the cooldown if the last like aim correction time is um, like uh, current time subs uh, subtracted by the uh, last aim correction time is greater than the cooldown, which is you know is the cooldown up or not, um, and if that time has passed already, then then everything is okay and we're going to try to do an aimbot um, to try to do some aim correction for this one. So we get all the participants which are the test players plus the players except this player itself and then we add the test NPCs on top of that. All right then we get the um, we have location and direction of the player and then we um, initialize the the found for character variable and the best angle so we're going to get the target that has the minimum angle distance then we loop all of, all of those others we make sure they are alive and then we get their location and upper location adding the height of set and then we're also making sure they are um, in the distance in the distance of the aimbot and then we get the um, we calculate the direction vector from the player view location to the uh, target location and then what we do is between the player view direction and the um, target um, direction we get the angle and this is uh, what's called a you know stable degree which is actually using the cross product so it's this is actually calculating a cone basically right um, so that you know because uh, like even though, um, because if we were to just do a dot product and look at the angle like that, then what would happen is the same, uh, like as the distance de increases, then we would get a different degree. So this um, cone approach gives us a more stable angle as the distances change. And then we get the rotation between them. Um, the shortest rotation oops um, I'm looking at the wrong thing okay um, and then yeah we calculate the ang angle and then if the angle is smaller or equal than the best angle then when then we set that okay when this loop ends we find our target and then we come to the um, we come to actually doing the aim correction part uh, we get the we get that upper location again and then we get the, the direction between the um, view location and the upper location again and then we get the minimum rotation between um, those two vectors so the view the vector view direction and the direction from view location to the play to the target um, and then we also calculate an alpha that we used to uh, use to do an slurp uh, which is used between the identity rotation and the this like this previously calculated rotation this allows us to have a more um, smooth rotation and then we make sure that the current um, degrees is um, basically um, greater than the threshold we can actually say greater equal that would be better um, then we set the cooldown like the last correction time and then we calculate the new rotation for this player's um, fourth character and then basically teleport them um, to set that rotation and you know that's it um, I was too eager to show show how it works so let me show the entire code first and you know we don't have any assets for that for this one because we actually didn't need any but if you want to access the code file directly you can check our patreon 
description. So now nothing happens because what? Because I didn't activate the aimbot. And now you can see, you can see that it like, um, actually this could be even said, yeah, you, you see, I mean, okay, actually pr pretty nice. I'd say there's a bit of a jitter, but you know, that could be, you know, obviously optimized with changing the values, but I think it's, it stays nicely on the target, especially if, you know, if you don't try to move away, then it will be obviously less jitter. Of course I can, if like I move too fast, uh, it, you know, it might miss the frame and actually not focus properly. Uh, but you know, um, uh, when you get closer, then it will, it will make sure to uh, lock on that. I can disable and now, you know, it doesn't do anything. So let me actually go on to the NPC and you can see it doesn't do anything because the distance is great. So the aimbot is not working, not is disabled. So yeah, as you can see, as the target is moving, the aimbot follows them. And actually, um, so here comes the, you see sometimes it goes off because that's actually um, related to the, actually the cone degree because um, I, I believe because it's um, like goes off the cone um, quickly. So that's why. So if I were to increase the cone, that would be also eliminated. So I think this is pretty nice. Yeah, I like this. Yep. All right, all right then, yeah. This is it, and let me actually die to that, so you will see that. Actually, no, it's not going to be disabled because I didn't tick it, right? Um, so disable aimbot after death, so that's not ticked, so nothing will happen. So, I mean, it will still be, the aimbot will be still um, active. Yep, you see. All right, um, yeah, that's about it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, um, hype, subscribe, and share. And uh, in the comments, leave what tutorial you would want to see next. See you later.